So it is the 2nd of January 2022. Another Happy New Year's from me to you, even though I said it in last week's video, but that one was recorded on the 25th of December. So I have come out to a forest. Surprise, surprise. I'm still back home in Jutland and I don't know for how long I will be that. But there was promised a little bit of fog in the, in the areas here in the middle part of Jutland and I think I found some. So I'm driving around to some of the locations that I've noticed over the years and this one here is one of those that uh, as you can see here behind me it is like a very very typical plantation very very typical forest for the area where I've grown up. If you've seen all my videos you wouldn't get that impression but this is a very typical place However, there are some places where, you know, there are some old gnarly twisted trees standing out. And I've been driving past this place so many times and I've always been like, that place may look really amazing when there's some fog. I'm in here. I have scouted it once, but I didn't really come away with anything I found super interesting. However, these trees right here I'm photographing may actually do the job. I actually find them quite interesting so you can see i have these two old twisty gnarly very dead looking trees and just underneath i have a little grove of a bunch of new sprouses young sprouses you can see right there and i'm using those as the foreground and then we get this interaction between the young new trees and the old dead trees. In all honesty, I have no clue if these trees are actually dead. They kind of look dead, but I'm not entirely sure. And I think this actually makes up for quite an interesting photo. So we have this life and death, young and old uh, thing going on in it. On top of that, I'm waiting for the fog to like come a little bit more in. Uh, it, kind of fluctuates a little bit going out of the scene coming back into the scene and basically just waiting around for the fog to come back in right now as you can see i'm shooting with the long lens i am at about 220 millimeter f63 iso 100 so i'm lowering the iso all the way down i'm overexposing a little bit like exposing to the right as to get an optimal exposure, f6.3 gives me a little bit of separation between my main subjects of the scene, the foreground with the small trees, and then just a little bit in the mid-ground, background-ish, we have the dead trees. And then in the background, we have all the other sprouse trees. And it gives this nice separation in the scene, and it gives me a shutter speed of about one second. It's quite dark in here in the forest, but I actually think it... It works out really really well with this scene here it it comes together it's i'm thinking about the holistic thing like you know you want to have the entire scene to make sense so here's the photo So as I mentioned, I'm basically just driving around and hey, look at me, <laughs> no uh, hat on. It's actually surprisingly warm, considered it's the 2nd of January. Uh, so a very typical Danish winter, very mucky weather and warm. Anyway, as I said, I'm driving around and right now I'm just like, you know, next to the road here. And I came by this line of beautiful trees here in the fog and right now I'm shooting towards the tree over here and the composition looks like this here so it's a very simple composition with this beautiful tree there's not a whole lot to it I'm not including any kind of foreground or anything like that it's all about that tree up there obviously if I like 
try to include some kind of foreground. It's not really possible. The road is ugly. And if I was shooting wider than I am right now, I would start including the sky and the part here would be just way too small. So it's not really any point to include a foreground. It would just ruin the shot. So in this case here, it's just straight on, nothing special, 300 millimeter. F16, I'm letting the fog do the separation, not some kind of like, you know, low aperture as I did a little bit in the last photo. ISO 100 gives me a shutter speed of two seconds. And that's about it. If you struggle with composition and landscape photography, be sure to pick up my two ebooks on exactly that topic. Instead of talking about compositional rules, I prefer the term compositional tools, as these techniques are some you can choose to use to tell your story or up the aesthetics. I have designed the ebooks to be very easy to read with minimal text and loads of examples as to get to the point fast. Both ebooks Landscape Composition 1 and 2 has loads of 5 star reviews. Thank you very much to all of you who have already got them. And if you are still in doubt, you can check out the two free light versions first. You will find the links to both the free light versions and the full versions in the description of this video. So driving around in a plantation like this, there's like a lot of side roads from like the main road. And some of them look more aesthetic than others. So I was just driving one way and I actually didn't see this road here. And I decided like, nah, there's not really a whole lot going that direction. So I decided to turn around and go back. And then I saw like this road coming in from the main road behind here. I can't bring the car in here because you're not really allowed to drive on all these small side roads. It is public area as it is the state owned. It's not a private forest. Um, but you're still not allowed to drive on all these small forest roads, so you will have to walk for the rest of the distance. Luckily, I don't have to walk a whole lot because the scene is right here. So I'm zooming down to 200 millimeter or into 200 millimeter and photographing the scene right here. Nice little amount of fog here in the background. I have a tree right here on the right side. It's probably easier if I actually show you <laughs> on on the back of my camera. So I have the tree right here uh, on the right and then I have some trees over here to like balance it out and then I of course have the fog to create some nice depth and separation in the scene. Right now the forest trail or this particular forest trail is actually really aesthetic. It's very clean, relatively clean. Uh, it, it's not you know full of tractor tracks and all sorts of branches sticking in from right or left or anything like that. So in this particular case, I personally find that this trail is fairly aesthetic and it adds to the scene and helps create that depth leading you into the background or into the photo. So right here, it's a beautiful trail. And I have come across, I can actually just show you some B-roll from the first location I was at. There were some trails with tractor tracks that just looked like, yeah, they look terrible. <laughs> and I would never ever incorporate a trail like that into a scene because a trail like that would basically just ruin the photo because it's not really super aesthetic. This trail here, clean, but try to avoid the unclean trails, at least that's what I try to, unless I want to show an unclean trail. But generally, when we aim for something aesthetic, we try to up the aesthetic quality of our photos, so we don't want to show something that is unesthetic. So that ought to make sense. Here's the photo.
again stopped just next to the road. I'm going to do this short because I'm so close to like a private drive-in right here in the house right here. So it's a little bit <laughs> weird. Um, but I come by these absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous uh, sprouts, tree, trap, tree traps, tree tops that are like standing out really nice on the background. I've tried a few different perspectives with this one. It, it looks it looks so, so cool. Now you can see here is, no, you absolutely cannot see how it looks. Nope. Anyways, they are up here. So I have yet again put on the long lens. I completely feel like it's a long lens day today. Uh, there's not a whole lot to it. F16, ISO 100, and it gives me a shutter speed of around uh, half a second or so um, with the light that's available right here. In regard to foreground, background, all that thing, right now, like, I'm not bringing in an immediate foreground. I don't really need that because the fog is separating the photo so well. I basically only have, like, the foreground trees, and hopefully there will be a little bit of depth in them, and then I have the background trees. So, yeah, it creates this really, really nice sense of depth with these trees due to the fog. So. Here's the photo. I think this, this one here is one of my favorites of today. So another completely random location that I've never been to before, but I came by and I was like, mm, there's potential here because it's quite a dynamic landscape. So we have some hills, some trees, there's a lake down here, and obviously we have the fog to separate the layers throughout the scene. Now I walked a little bit around here just to see if I could find a good vantage point. And what I was mainly attracted to is that there's like a tree over here, a leaf tree, and it's surrounded by sprouts trees, so needle trees. And I was like trying to figure out how to best compose this scene when I heard a couple of swans that started here, they kind of flew in here, and then I was like, oh, come on, and no, they were flying around again. However, I decided that maybe there was a chance that those swans will come back and fly through the scene, so I just put in the settings really fast. I zoomed a bit further out just before the swans, uh, spoiler, <laughs> came back into the scene, which they did. So I composed the scene like this right here. So you can see I have a little bit of a foreground here, and then I basically have the scene coming up here in an S-curve through the scene. And then I have the swans up here to show you the photo. Yeah, it's very hard to see. So, uh, the swans. No, you probably can't see them. <laughs> Nevertheless, they are there right here, if you can see that. So, very lucky last shot here with a decent foreground. It's not too big of a foreground. You see, I don't really have a whole lot to work with when it comes to foregrounds in and of themselves. So, this year will be the foreground S curve up and then into the swans up in the air there. So I fill the scene. There's more than just like a white sky above the background trees. So I think this here is uh, the final photo of this video. I think it's a nice high note to end with. Be sure to check out the links down in the description. Be sure to sign up for my huge Photoshop for landscape photographers post-processing course. If you want to learn how I process my photos, I have designed the course to be very progressive so that we start in the easy ways and then I introduce you to the different programs, softwares that I use to edit my photos and then we gradually advance throughout different tools. I show you all the different tools and techniques I use to edit my photos and I show you I have like nine or 10, 11 start to finish tutorials where I apply those different tools. 
And I have a lot of other small videos about my philosophy of editing and some mistakes you want to avoid and all sorts of good stuff in there. There is a discount code in the description along with my two ebooks. So thank you so much for watching. As always, I would highly appreciate both a like and a comment. And uh, here is the final photo.